views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to the Karmic Path with your hosts, Tina Irwin and Laura Van Tyne. Join us as we dive into the normal and the paranormal to break through the darkness and to help you realize how karma, spiritual law, and psychic ability all combine to open the doors of understanding. This is the place where we build the karmic connections between science, psychology, and spirituality. But can we change our karmic path? Can we help someone else's karma? Stay tuned and join us for an opportunity to look at life and spirituality from a down-to-earth, no-nonsense, practical perspective. The Karmic Path Radio Show with Laura and Tina, Better Karma for Better Living, starts now. Welcome to The Karmic Path. I'm Laura Van Tyne, and this is Tina Irwin. And we want to start off with discussing that passion is our karma. And everybody... Karma is our passion. Oh, that too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. You're, you're, you're always correcting me, okay? No, it's just that you're, you're really funny sometimes. <laughs> Intentionally or not? <laughs> keep going, keep going. Okay. All right. So passion is our karma, not karma is our passion. Karma is our passion. Karma is our passion. Do you want to do this? No, I'm good. <laughs> Anyways, we all have a karmic path, whether we're aware of it or not. And we don't live in a bubble, and all of our actions and reactions do echo out, and they collide with one another. And so we're offering a new way of looking at life so that you can perhaps improve on your karmic path and live a better life. And I want to start out with mentioning that for the month of February, we're giving out two books each week that are signed. And this week's winners, we're drawing them from Facebook live posts and we're drawing them from our email campaign. Janina from Spokane and um, Bonnie. Bonnie from, we're not sure where. But she's from the TAPS. <laughs> she works for the TAPS organization. Yes, yeah, she's with the TAPS organization. So. We are really thrilled to be sending those out soon. So please make sure if you're not on our email list to please join it. We send things out maybe once a month at best and say hi to us on Facebook Live. We'd love to see you there. And we kind of go back and forth during the commercials on the Facebook Live stuff. All right. So we're going to be discussing all different kinds of love. And what I want to do is, is tell you what I love about you, Laura. Okay. <laughs> is that you're organized. You're really funny. You're on time. You have great ideas and you talk to the dead. Gotta love it. There you go. And sometimes I read words backwards. <laughs> sometimes you read words backwards, but it just shows that you're human and we all, we all. Well, thank you. That's a very nice and introduction. Doing, and when you're doing stuff live, stuff happens. It does. It does. And thank you. It was really sweet of you. And I can say the same about you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> else would give us this handy dandy little checklist <laughs> well you know proper prior planning prevents possibly poor performance there you go <laughs> so it's Valentine's you took Day. the navy tongue out of your mouth I did. okay i did i don't work in the shipyard anymore all right it's valentine's day and so we'd like to just share with everyone the concepts of soulmates and love mates and those amazing karmic Sometimes connections. they're hate mates too, okay? They <laughs> they can, they. I mean, you, you met somebody and the first time you met them, it's like the hackles went up on it's the like, back of your neck and this? you go, whoa, what is it about this person that it just makes me want to run into the next country? <laughs> right. It happens. It happens. But we're talking about love and different forms of love. Valentine's Day can make, make us, a lot of us feel lonely. But we want to explore the different types of love that are out there because it's not just about romantic love. We're also finding, and we're not just seeing it on Facebook, there's just NPR had an article about it, the feeling among all ages of people of higher and increasing levels of loneliness. Here we're supposedly more connected than ever before. Connectedly disconnected. Connectedly, yeah. did, it's a very, did you make that up? I did. Okay, it's really clever. And I didn't even say it backwards. You didn't. <laughs> we're connectedly disconnected and we're not 
maybe we're not sure why. And we're, we're always thinking it has to be romantic love, but you can have a soulmate. And I think you and I are soulmates, even though you know, we have husbands and right. children. We're not romantically involved, but we are soul. <laughs> Thank God, Jesus, my top liver. No. <laughs> we got to have some humor about this. You can have a soulmate who is not the person you're married to. Right. And it doesn't have to be a soulmate doesn't have to be a romantic endeavor either. No, a soulmate can be a person you're in business with. It can be one of your children. It can be or all of them or all of them. It can be a lot of people in your life. It's not just one person. Thank goodness. Right. And, you know, it can even be our pets. You know, my dog Murphy, every time I come home, Murphy is waiting at the door with a big old smile on his face. And his happiest moments are when I actually sit on the sofa and he crawls into my lap upside down. And it's just a form of unconditional love. And a lot of times our pets offer us that as well. I think we need unconditional love and we don't seem to find it. I think what happens when you have social media is that you open yourself up on social media and you let people in who really wouldn't ordinarily be your friend. Maybe some people who might be your friend that you wouldn't have known, but mm -hmm. there is this feeling of privilege that someone can say something to you because they you can't see their face, there's no ramifications. And they can say something to you that might be hurtful. They could say something that's really positive too, but unfortunately not everyone does something positive. So we're feeling these situations where social media enables us to connect, but feel alone at the same time, especially if a lot of people dogpile someone and gang up on them about an opinion that was made. Even maybe that person did something wrong and everybody's jumping all over them. Right. And, it, and there's more to it than that. It's the fact that there's nothing can take the place of a personal in-person friendship. When we're talking to somebody in person, it's very different than looking at them on the screen. When Even we, though we're really grateful you're looking at us on the screen. Yes. <laughs> and you know, the ability to, at dinner time, put your phone down and not feel the impulse or the urge to answer every text, tweet, email that comes by and to give that person your undivided attention no matter what your relationship is with them. It's a form of giving. It's a form of connection. And a lot of times we hear people who, maybe younger people who are trying to find someone and they're doing a dating site and they're texting back and forth. And the concept of speaking to someone on the phone has become so it can be terrifying fashion. right well why would you talk to someone on the phone you could hear their voice because you have a phone interview and you just graduated college <laughs> and right. you have to learn how to yeah. speak on the phone with some level of education authority and personability right and you know we're bringing up the social media thing because i think it really does affect us a myriad of age groups it's not discriminatory but one of the things, the biggest facet about love is that love is an opportunity for us to have experiences. And we are immortal. These bodies, as I said last week, they're kind of like rental units. We're borrowing them right now and eventually we shed this body and our soul moves on. We reincarnate here over and over and over. And the biggest reason why we incarnate here is for the lessons and experiences this planet offers us. Those lessons and experiences always revolve around love and the interactions with other people, whether they're very beneficial or really detrimental. Right. And when we're talking about this, we're going to be discussing reincarnation in, the, in a, later on down the segment, but I want you to kind of tell the story that you have about reincarnation and learning from some of those experiences. I have a lot of those stories. <laughs> You're psychic, read my mind. Okay, <laughs> I've had many lifetimes, like the rest of the world, and nothing special about me. And I'm sorry, my you just keep thing. making mood. Okay, I keep making noise. Sorry yeah. about that. And I, in my past lives, I have met this one particular person over and over, and in life after life, one of us 
always died early. One person is lost at sea, one person is drowned as a witch, another person is, has, is killed by the Inquisition. And so every time, you know, I think I'm going to have a whole life with this person, one of us dies. And in, in one of the lives that we're very aware of, my husband actually tried to defend me and I was drowned and deliberately, not by him, but by someone else. And he ended up with an extraordinarily lonely life, the rest of that life. And he died alone. And I, and so this life, we get to have a whole life together. And it's, it sounds like it, gee, that was so sad. Well, it, it, could, it, have, it could have been all of those previous life experiences of trial and tribulation, of overcoming odds, of dealing with loneliness and sadness and grief now afford you the opportunity to have this long life together. I absolutely agree with that. I think that it does. It has caused us to have a deep and abiding appreciation for the love that we can have for each other. And to be grateful, we have this time together. And we, I mean, no marriage has a long life without any, any difficulties. When, Say what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> However, when you can focus on overcoming those difficulties and recognizing that, okay, maybe there's some things about yourself that you would change or he would change. It's called soul evolution. You evolve to a place where you're really comfortable with each other and you still love each other. And you're willing to give and take. I mean, there's a balance. Karma always seeks balance, especially with relationships. And are we giving too much? Are we giving too little? Are we too much of this, too much of that? It's literally a lesson in love and learning and balance. And we have a book out, Soul Evolution, Past Lives and Karmic Ties, where we're talking about this in great detail. I think it's important to understand that none of us lead a perfect life. We lead lives of experience. So your spouse isn't perfect and you're not perfect. And we have had situations where in the past, in many centuries past, we had whole family groups that were and friends and neighbors that were loving and working together. But in these times, that seems to have stopped. And we're gonna talk about what happened in those past times and how we can maybe recreate them when we come back. And we'll be right back. You're listening to The Karmic Path on Transformation Talk Radio. Have a question or comment? Contact us at questions at thekarmicpath.com. If you can't listen live, an easy way to find us is you can simply download the Karmic Path app to your phone or device. All right, Tina, you're telling us the story about these past lives that you've experienced. I was. And I was also talking about the fact that in past lives, we all had a group around us that we could chat with. And I was talking to my one of my daughters-in-law about this recently. And military wives seem to have an understanding about this. We can't possibly expect our husbands to give us everything we need. He's just not there. I mean, <laughs> my husband spent 42 years at sea. Not going to be there for all the things that I need needed. So I found that I had all kinds of wonderful military wives who helped me. My kids were there for me. My siblings were there for me, for which I'm truly grateful. And so... I recognize that my husband can't possibly be that beginning and end all for me personally, that there are other people who fill those needs in my life. Maybe we need to look at our spouse, and this is true for men. There are Your wife can't possibly fill every need that a, that a, a man might have as far as you know different kinds of companionship. Maybe you're like your husband likes to fish or you like to fish and your spouse doesn't you have a fishing buddy for, for, or a bowling buddy or a golf buddy, whatever. 
So other people are allowed to fill what the needs that each of us have. And that's okay. It doesn't mean that there is a failing in your spouse. Spouses do the best they can sometimes. And we need to be kind to them. (laughs) Okay, I think you have a really cool story. All right. So this story is a client that I had a little while ago. And it's just, it's an interesting story. It's about karma and relationships and reincarnation. So this client, I'm going to call her Betty, the mom. The current living mom is Betty and the child is Mary, let's say. All right. Current mom is having issues with the current daughter because the daughter is very obstinate, wants to tell the mom what to do to the point where it's just a little insane. And as parents know, you know, our kids can be obstinate sometimes, but this is a little different. And when we did a little mini past life regression, we found out that her current daughter used to be the mom in this relationship and the current mom used to be the daughter in the past relationship the daughter was a very cruel and vicious mother to her daughter now karma has reversed the roles karma has said okay current living daughter it's time for you to understand maybe what this is like and the current daughter is having a really tough time with this quote unquote world reversal because she is a very dominating figure. And she, when she was the mother of this client in a past life, she was very vicious and cruel to her then daughter. And so now we're looking at this as this is a really good op- karmic opportunity to kind of balance these two relationships out. When you can understand that, it makes a huge difference. And sometimes when you look at a relationship, because you're you step back from it a little bit. And I saw this with someone that one that my daughter knew in high school. The mother was very meek and submissive, and good heavenly days, could she so she was a master seamstress. And the daughter would demand all these amazing acting costumes and everything else. And whatever the daughter wanted, the mother was like, yes. And so I'm looking at this thinking somebody was a princess in a past life and the mother was the seamstress. So now the mother is supposed to be in the, I'm sorry, sorry. Yes. The mother is supposed to be. She is supposed to be in the leadership role and the daughter is supposed to learn from her. But the daughter's losing respect because her mother is super meek and super mild. Her mother never raises her voice, never says a thing that disagrees with the daughter. And the daughter's an adult now. And it's it's not a happy situation. There is no respect there. And, and when you look at that as an example, sometimes you have to say, well, wait a minute. How does this, does it feel wrong? Maybe there's something I can do that would make this better. This is a soul evolution opportunity. And if you can step back without the emotion and analyze it in a scientific manner, it makes finding solutions so much easier and it stops those knee-jerk reactions that we can have when we're emotional and upset. Parents have a very powerful responsibility. It's a karmic job, for lack of a better word. And I'll give you an example. In this one particular family and the the daughter-in-law and the husband were the clients. The husband was explaining that he and his brother fought to the point of practically killing each other from the time they have memory. And the parents just looked the other way. The parents didn't stop it. The parents didn't change the behavior. They said, well, you know, the kids will be, boys will be boys. Why, what is my job? Why would I try to stop it? You try to stop Um, it. You're the parent. (laughs) You're the parent. It's your job. So karma puts you in an opportunity to change the karmic path of your children for the better by your responsible actions. I know that sounds like a lot to say, but you have a job to do. It's very true. And, you know, I'm going to back it up a little bit. Yes, we do pick our parents. Yes, we do pick our parents. And And I know you're all thinking, I'm going to pick better next time. (laughs) Or I did a great job this life. I had great parents. I really appreciate the lessons those parents taught me. Right. We pick our parents for the experiences and and opportunities we need for our soul's path. And sometimes we outgrow a family. Sometimes we keep 
growing with the family. Every path is different. In fact, I know we've talked about a couple of difficult reincarnation stories. I, I have a great neighborhood. Everybody knows each other. We have neighborhood parties. And I remember one of my neighbors, they, they had a bunch of us over there celebrating the fact that they're going to have another child. And the mom says to me, she goes, you know, they have a then three and a half year old girl. And she says, yeah, my daughter said the strangest thing to me. She says, you know, when we found out we were pregnant, we decided to tell her. She looked at me and she put her hands on her hips and said, finally, my brother is finally coming. It took long enough. And the mom was just kind of like, that was really weird, wasn't it? And she said, but the weird part was, the mom says, is we're ha- we had a boy. And maybe that wasn't so weird. Maybe that these souls decided to come in together as brother and sister. Now, here's the interesting thing about this brother and sister pair is they never fight. The mom and the dad are just watching their two kids and they're like, what the heck? The the little boy now is about four and they, they never fight. They get along famously. But for some reason, she was really excited to for her brother's arrival. And somehow on some psychic level, she knew her brother was coming. I think it's a charming story. It's a really charming story. I remember, and by the way, my, my neighbors had no idea what I do. <laughs> yeah, well, it would be a surprise. My right. neighbors don't really know either. <laughs> let's keep it that way. Anyway, yeah, so let's go on radio. <laughs> let's go on radio and make everybody know. <laughs> I, I When I delivered my oldest child, my son, I they said, oh, Lieutenant, you have a little boy. And I'm like, are you sure did you check? And he thought, oh, my God, the anesthesia, she must still be out of it. And it was because my daughter kept talking to me for the full nine months. And I naturally. And she wasn't born yet. She wasn't born yet. Yeah. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I got to go do this again. <laughs> she's coming. And I'm thrilled to have this little boy who is one of the loves of my life. It's a wonderful person. All three children are great people. And I and so, you know, I get pregnant again. And, you know, the second time it's a girl. Thank goodness she got to come in and and that an astounding relationship has been going on ever since. And so we are soulmates in in so many levels, but I have a soulmate relationship with each child and every single parent has a soulmate relationship with every single child they have, whether it's a happy relationship or not, it exists. It exists. And our relationships and our love just don't stop at family. They can include karmic lessons with coworkers or bosses, friends, school classmates. It doesn't stop. And so if you're, you know, kind of sitting here kind of lonely, start looking around and see who your friends and family are and those loved ones around you. And we can learn to appreciate what they can offer us. And it's not always going to be an easy offering. It's also an opportunity to reject negative things that people are putting into your life who may have no right to do that. And again, this kind of goes back to social media. Look at the people in your life who matter the most and who are the most important to you. And then see how much you're allowing in your life. And let's say that you've always had a turbulent relationship with your mother or your father. What can you learn from that parent? Maybe you're a soulmate with that parent. And I will use this quick example. When I met my mother-in-law, it was truly a dislike at first sight to the point I wanted to run out of the room screaming, vomiting. It was, it was really, really bad. And it went downhill from there (laughs) and it went downhill for a very long time until I was finally able to come to terms with the fact that I had to resolve this, this lifetime. I had a lot of help with it. I had to study and study and study. I had to come to terms with some things within myself. I didn't like who I was when I was around her. I almost became a different personality. So I'm, I'm certainly saying that out loud. But when I came to terms with it, I realized that some things about her weren't the same this lifetime as they had been in the past. And maybe we could forge a different relationship, which we did. And we're going to be right back. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio on the Karmic Path. (laughs) 
All right, you're listening to The Karmic Path on Transformation Talk Radio. We're talking about karma, love, soulmates, love mates, all kinds of mates. And Tina's talking about reincarnation and an issue she had with her mother-in-law. The entire point of soul evolution is what did you learn? And I realized that in past lives, this woman had power over me and that part of my hatred was fear. And I realized that she had no power over me this lifetime. I didn't need to be afraid of her. We had quite a uh, period of time where we didn't talk to each other because I didn't like who I was when I was with her. And then eventually we did have a reconciliation and we set up some ground rules. She followed the ground rules. I followed the ground rules and we were able to build a relationship in the latter half of her life. She died at 90. And she was able to tell me that she thought I was a good mother. She thought that she was grateful that, that my husband and I have had such a long marriage and she loved me. That's a really big deal for someone whose initial meeting was one of vomiting. I mean, to be blunt, that's soul evolution. And I know people talk about being spiritual, but sometimes being spiritual is really hard work. It was really yeah. hard for me. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. It was really hard. <laughs> and we're all going to come across those difficult personalities. You're not going to live a life and not come across a difficult personality. And one of the things that we talk about in the book, Soul Evolution, Past Lives and Karmic Ties, is to look for patterns in your life. Let's say that you had a dad who was super controlling and now you're and you know, he dictated your every move. Now you're an adult, you're living on your own. And now you have this boss that's super controlling. All right. Karma's testing you. What did you learn? What can you do differently? Sometimes the different thing is to know just to leave a job. Sometimes it is to learn how to handle that controlling personality in a slightly different manner because it shifts the energy. It changes the power dynamic between you. And there are always going to be situations where someone has more power over you. It's how judicious are they? And if you allow them to abuse you, it's a very interesting karmic situation. If you have the power to stop someone from abusing you and you don't use it, then you earn the karma for allowing them to create negative karma by abusing you. Okay, let's explain that again. Go ahead. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So if someone is hurting you and you could walk away or they're hurting your children and you don't do anything about it, you don't stop it, then obviously the person who's doing the the abuse is earning negative karma. But But if you could leave and you don't, whose karma is worse? Maybe worse is a bad or bad way, but who is earning a greater level of difficult karma? If you are being abused and you can safely walk away. I mean, there's going to be some instances that are a little over the top and we know and respect that, but you're being abused by somebody and you choose to take it. What are you learning? Karma's going to test you with another personality with those same traits. Okay. So you have an abusive father and that's the pattern. So you marry a man who abuses you. I actually know of a woman who had a horrifically abusive father and she married a man who not only did not abuse her, but was so good to her. It's almost like she didn't feel she deserved it. And sometimes you feel that you're guilty for something that you're not really right. guilty for. And again, the abuser and the abusee are soulmates trying to evolve past this darkness that is this little This little dance that they're doing. Right. So it's how do you step out? That's the that's the tricky part. It takes work. And, you know, we hear this this all the time. If I had to do it over, I would surely do it differently. Well, guess what we do? But it's theme and variation, because if you take the same test with the same questions all the time, it doesn't prove you've learned anything. So this is why we have theme and variation that karma offers us. And I also want to talk about another situation that happens a lot. And this was recent. Um, 
a woman had written in and she said that, you know, I don't understand my, my boyfriend is leaving me and he's calling me all these terrible things. And I gave up my, you know, my hobbies for him. I stopped everything so we could spend time together. If he wanted me for something, I dropped what I was doing and I ran to him. What more could I have done? And she said, it kept, he kept treating her worse and worse and worse. So my question for her was, it is exactly what you didn't do. You didn't stand up for yourself. And I suspect that he is getting tired of it. And you're being so nice and kind all the time and you're giving up your identity. He, he doesn't want somebody who's going to give up an identity to be with him. He wants a person who is his equal person he can respect. And if you are laying down everything, you give up everything, then you become a martyr. And again, karma is always about balancing the opportunity in front of you. And you gave up everything, but did you have to do that? Suppose, and if you feel like he wouldn't let you, if he, he wouldn't, he won't love me if. Exactly. You see this a lot. He won't love me if I do X. Maybe, maybe, maybe you don't want that love. <laughs> maybe if that's what's happening, that's not the guy for you. And if you do have an abusive person in your life, it's still okay to love them and you can love them at a distance. Okay. I have a, I have a fun, well, maybe not a fun story. It was an interesting story. <laughs> fun story about abuse. Okay, Tina. <laughs> it's a story. It's an interesting story. It's this lovely, lovely woman who was married to an extraordinarily handsome man. I mean, he looked like the guy from the Old Spice commercial. I mean, I mean, wow. And so, and she was a very attractive woman. And he just knew how handsome he was. Some guys are not that aware of it. This guy knew. Women were falling all over him. And he had a lot of affairs. And she decided that she wasn't going to put up with it anymore. And he told her that she had to because he was a super spiritual person because his kundalini was rising a lot. And I think some things were rising. It was always his kundalini. And you can have your kundalini rise and still be a faithful husband. <laughs> and so she decided to divorce him. And she decided not to hate him because they have children together. And she said to her children that she was making a responsible choice because she didn't choose to live this type of life. She could always love him because he's the father of their, of she is, he is their father. She can always love him, but she doesn't always have to love or appreciate or put up with his actions. So they had as amicable, uh, amicable a divorce as you could have. And he continued his pattern. She didn't. She really, really improved herself. She has an amazing relationship with her children. She is quite the backbone. And she asked me an absolutely fascinating question as we had worked together for her on and off for a couple of years. And she said, you know, I, this was a big change for me. And, and her question was this, in this lifetime, I put up with what he did. And I came to a point where I decided that, no, this is no longer all right for me. I did it in a kind, responsible, spiritually, karmically correct way. And now he's still behaving that way, but I'm moving forward. Do I have to come back in another lifetime with him and do this all over again? And first of all, I don't tell futures <laughs> because it's a violation of spiritual law. So there's no divination going on here. What I did tell her was the way karma works is that if you learn the lesson in one lifetime, you don't have to repeat it 52 more times. Karma may test you to see if you got the lesson. But once karma is really, really sure you got the lesson, then you don't have to repeat it. However, if your husband isn't, your ex-husband wasn't learning the lesson and he continued the behavior, then he will have to continue learning the lesson but with a different spouse you will go on to a different person as your spouse in potentially in this life. It could also happen in this life or the next life. 
and those wonderful things can happen. That's the that's the beauty of soul evolution. That's what it's really all about. And like we said before, we're always getting tested. So when we look at as, when we look at a difficult situation, if you step back and say, "Okay, what's the test? What am I supposed to learn?" That gives you your power back. Oh, that's a great point. It really does. It gives you your power back. Okay. Okay. My boss is being a jerk to me. He just humiliated me in front of this meeting. Okay. What am I supposed to learn from this? If you step back, you know, lick your wounds, but then be done with it. What was I supposed to learn? Okay. Am I supposed to learn how to politically handle him? Maybe I'm supposed to learn something about work politics, or maybe I'm supposed to go to HR. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Every situation is unique. There's no one right way or pattern to solve a problem. That's why we have a karmic path. And there's many paths within that path. And when we come back, I have kind of an interesting story. And we will be right back. You're listening to The Karmic Path on Transformation Talk Radio. Have a question or comment? Contact us at questions at thekarmicpath.com. Welcome back to The Karmic Path and Transformation Talk Radio. You can always download The Karmic Path app if you can't listen to us live or go to thekarmicpath.com and click on the widget. And I was thinking while we're on this break, I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, you know, you're pretty funny too. Yeah, I have my moments. (laughs) She said something to me last week that pretty much made me want to fall on the floor and pee my pants, but I didn't. (laughs) Right before the show, I had on a blouse that had a zipper on it. And she says, you know, (laughs) <laughs> you really need to lower the sexy quotient. <laughs> is that why you're wearing a turtleneck this week? Yeah, so okay. it's, this is for you. This is for you, sweetheart, right here. <laughs> well, you have a little humor in life. <laughs> I've never heard it put that way before. Well, I'm creative. <clears throat> really creative. Yeah. All right. So, Speaking of sexy quotients, okay. I had a boss who swatted me on the fanny when I walked out of his office in front of an office full of people who watched this. Oh, I wish I would have been a fly on that wall. (laughs) (laughs) And so I said, you all saw him do that. You all saw him do that. And I mean, he froze and the entire room was like, (gasps) and so just then a Marine major walked in and I said, John, pull up your pants legs. So he shows these really hairy, ugly legs and ankles. And I said, We know why the XO is a fanny man, because this major has horrible looking legs. Everybody laughed. And so then I went back into the XO's office and I said, don't you ever say that to me again, ever. All right. This is sexual harassment. You will not do that to me ever again. And he never did. And if you would have put up with it, what are the odds he would have done it again? He would have done it again. and, And I said, you will never do that to another woman officer at this command ever again. This is not acceptable. And walked out. I was just a lowly lieutenant. <laughs> not going to put up with that. And he never did that to any of us. And there were 10 women officers at that command. So, and I, I earned the karma for putting a stop to it. I didn't let him continue it. Well, you also stopped him from incurring more negative karma down the road with other women. Right. I mean, this was part of, part of, your life mission or service is to pay attention to what's happening to you in the moment. If you can think really fast and you have a Marine major with ugly legs, I mean, that's just how it works. So there we go. Okay. <laughs> your turn. All right. You are going to tell another story about another past life. I have a lot of past lives. It looks like I have a lot to learn. So I keep coming back. <laughs> oh, I have a few too, but I'm just keeping my mouth shut. So okay. you just go ahead. I had a, uh, I was visiting, our, my husband and I were visiting our daughter in Bath, England. She was getting her master's degree there. And she took us into the cathedral in downtown Bath, which is perfectly gorgeous. And we're wandering through, and in this particular cathedral, it was there for centuries. And on the walls were the tombs, and there's 
somebody literally in beautiful script wrote the story about this person's life and death, who their parents were and what they did and how much they were loved. And on this one particular inscription, I put my hand on it. I just touched it. And this whoa, wow, wave of emotion hit me. And it was about this woman who's, whose niece died as a young woman. And she and her niece had been so close to each other. And I just felt this emotion just getting worse and worse. And we went, we actually went to England. Or more intense. More intense. Thank you. That's a better word. So when we, we went back, um, when she graduated and I went back to the cathedral and this time when I touched it, I knew for sure I was the aunt and she was the niece who had passed away. And I just, you know, I had to leave the cathedral and I sat down and cried and I found myself profoundly grateful that I got to have another life with this amazing person. And, and then so I found that life that we had. That's why Bath was so familiar. Well, and sometimes karma will take us to places that we've been to in the past. Yes. To get very good resolution of some sort. And so if you think about, if you're looking at reincarnation, who was I or where was I or whatever, think about things you like or think of your interests or locations that, you know, you're drawn to. There might be some clues there, just like you had in Bath. And Italy <clears throat> and South America. <laughs> there's a lot of places, a lot of lives. So there's a lot to learn. There's always a lot to learn. All right. So that was, I guess I said all right this time instead of you saying it. We're but you make, said so also. I did. We're always trying to not say the same words. We're trying to be conscious of it. One of the things that's really helpful if you feel that you're lonely is to connect to the divine. And you can do that with blessing and prayer. It's a part of loneliness is a separation from, from the divine, from feeling you're connected to God. I mean, most when people talk about being spiritual, they seldom mention the, the G word. But when you are connected to God, to the divine, and you say those prayers and you have a conversation, and it doesn't matter what your faith is, is irrelevant. It's personal, it's private. And you can feel that connection. There's a part of you that's not ever going to be lonely again. It takes time. You have to work at it. It's important. But it's, it's really, it can be a very powerful change in your life. And it helps you on your path of soul evolution. And we are segueing into. We're going to read a quick passage of soul evolution. And this kind of sums up a lot of what we're discussing today. How do I know if I learned the lessons from previous lives? If you look around you and you have great health, a happy outlook on life, abundance, which can take on many forms, children if you wanted them, a wonderful love life, fulfilling work, then obviously you've overcome many patterns. If you have all of this and you're still seeking other types of experiences through service, giving love and compassion, then it's possible to say, that you've come a very long way and are perhaps on your way to realizing a life mission. You're in a great position to soar in your quest for greater and greater insights, understandings, and opportunities to do more service. But what if the opposite is true? What if you're having a terrible time trying to find someone to love? What if wealth constantly escapes you and in different forms, we're not talking just necessarily monetary. What if you wanted children, but you can't have them, or you have one terrible boss after the other, and you, or you have kids and a husband, but you find that you're not happy with your life? Perhaps it's time to consider that there may be some elements of your past that you may want to bring to the forefront of your consciousness to begin to address and understand and work out and heal these things. Finding these answers could be numerous aspects of your soul purpose. And we all have a soul purpose. Some people have more than one. The more knowledge you seek to acquire about your life, who you are, why you're here, the nature and your reason for living, your purpose for being here, and what you want to accomplish and the experiences you want to have, the more of these you will have. Who are you on the inside? Do you like who you are? No one can make any of these assessments but you. 
And all of them are influenced by the karma you came in with and the experiences you've had in many past lives, including this life. And I think there's a lot in this book that is just as powerful as this excerpt. But think about where you're at in your life, where you want to go, what you want to be. As we end this, we want to quote from the Urantia book. It's one of our favorite books. It's not an easy read, though. (laughs) It's not. Go ahead. Devote your life to proving that love is the greatest thing in the world. And this is a quote from the Urantia book. Devote your life to proving that love is the greatest thing in the world. If we did that, wouldn't it be an amazing world? It would be an amazing world. So we're going to end with a few karmic concepts, science. The energy of who we are does not change in death because energy is neither created nor destroyed. Our psychology view, what we learn in each relationship we have, whether or not it is love, hate, or all that is in between is part of the psychology that makes us a whole person. And the spiritual element, souls reincarnate for the lessons and opportunities that soul needs on their karmic path. If you don't have the one you love, love all the people who are around you. Make their life wonderful. Love with all of your heart. And we want to thank the oillounge.com for sponsoring our show. They come in each week and we are very, very grateful to them. If you haven't checked out the oillounge.com, please do so. It's full of a ton of information on essential oils. Thank you for listening to The Karmic Path on Transformation Talk Radio. You can contact us at questions at thekarmicpath.com. Please download our app. It's absolutely free on iTunes. We're also grateful to our our producer, Kat Greeby, from Transformation Talk Radio. Talk to you next week. Thank you for spending time with us on the Karmic Path Radio Show. Listen live every Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific Time as we explore the fascinating elements of karma and how to make those critical connections between spirituality, science, and psychology. Both of us are seasoned psychics living ordinary lives in public education and the military. Tina and I both have a deep-rooted dedication to learning how the unseen world works and to share this knowledge. Learn how to create a heightened sense of understanding and karmic awareness for greater personal balance with the karmic path. For more information, visit thekarmicpath.com.